Defender X. Coming to save the world, it's Defender X. Yeah! None of that made any damn sense. No, but I love it. Good morning, everybody. It's Get Your Paint on Time every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard here from the Private Tube Press HQ. I am your host, Dallas, and I'm here to paint my Defender X and maybe something else and maybe something else and maybe something else. I got like five, five things on my desk that I can just be painting at any given time. So we're just going to keep going with this. With us today is Mr. John Swingles. Good morning. He's got the beatbox mixer over there. Uh, he's dropping some low wah, dub wah, beats, wah, 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 wah. peeps, sweeps, and bleeps, and uh, is just running this, the, the signal out to you in your home, office, um, bathroom, whatever, wherever you're at watching this. Whoa, did you just whoa? Right. Whoa. 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 Like, whoa, Scoob. I don't even have my paints out. So if you remember from last time, um, um, I'm painting this Defender X in an alternate color scheme. And I've done some work since then, as you can probably see. Hopefully you can see. Um, I've got some Kador Red base shading my Inferno Orange. And now I'm going to highlight it. Uh, and Vandebeest, this is the alpha form, right? The regular, not the hyper form. Alpha form Defender X. I still have my hyper, which is over here, and he still looks. So you can see where they each, so I'm putting next to each other, so you can see what happens when you paint. They become more painted. It's a very interesting <laughs> concept we're going to explore today on Get Your Paint On. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, so, as you can see, I've added darker blacks to um, my um, my boiler black, uh, creating more contrast there. Bring, bring them a little closer. A little closer. I'm sorry. My there uh, focus. There we go. There you go. And I used uh, some uh, gray coat gray to shade the white and then brought in Morrow white to um, highlight the white. Um, I did a bunch of lining. I put my glow in the knee, chest, and some other stuffs. Um, and I've shaded the Infernal Orange. And you can see the, the dramatic difference that that is making there. He's very dramatic. Very dramatic. Hola, everybody. Who said that? Brother Scott. Brother Scott. Scott, there's my grabby brush. I think this is my grabby brush. I'm going to grab a grabby brush. You can see me stretching across there, getting my stuffs. I gotta love the sound of that Velcro. You know, sorry. <laughs> I make loud noises. Loud noises. So, um, Striker911 asks, um, will I be doing a brighter glow on the Hyper? So, my Hyper has taken many steps in his evolution um, as I paint my alpha my opinion of what I'm doing with the alpha has changed or as I paint my alpha I'll get these words right in a moment uh, my opinion what I'm doing with the hyper has changed a couple times hang on I gotta do my shuka shuka uh, um, so I think that I'm going to keep this guy clean keep the blue glow orange uh stuff like that uh the hyper form will be um more red i'm gonna push this way more red the glow will be red and um i'm probably going to do as i talked about some illustration style lining um to make him look more like a um like a comic book illustration if i can pull that off on the darker metals um that'll be interesting to see if i can even do that We'll see what happens. We're we're still playing here. I'm still got. I'm still in play time, and that is not bright enough. I need a little bit brighter. Grab your brush time. Grab your brush time. Gotta make it brighter every day. What color is that? Did I grab the right color? Yeah, I did. Heart what fire. would you go with? So I'm mixing heart fire in with the inferno orange to create a highlight. Oh word. There was a question there. Whenever you get back. 
phone up those colors and clickety clack. Inferno orange blazing to you from across the sky, galaxies. Uh, what? It's my birthday, Privateer. Got any Planet Eater spoilers? I'll take anything. Mind? Do I have any Planet Eater spoilers? I mean, if I could hmm. run back down to my desk, I got stuff on my desk probably that we could show. Did you show? Um, you showed something on something recently, John, didn't you? A Planet Eater guy, didn't you? Um, Was that on? No. Bell Lost Souls, didn't they get? No, Bell Lost Souls got something different. I thought they got a Planet Eater. Nah. They got a different thing. Well, unless you're talking about the Might. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. Okay. I'm trying to think of what kind of Planet Eater spoilers could we have? Could we show? Is that bright enough? Yeah, it's working. Um. <laughs> So okay, this is my this is my initial highlight color. Just to bring some brightness back into my orange. Like I said, I did Kato Red base and um, mm -hmm. to shade the infernal orange and it makes it very vivid. I love the color. Andrew DeRoma says, "What's the possibility of doing a live show that's in front of a live audience the Thursday before lock and load? The idea would be inside the lobby of the hotel, private screening, yada yada. Um, unfortunately, Thursday is setup day, and that wipes us out. However, all of the streaming that weekend, including you know like anything we do, like Primecast Live, all that stuff, will be in front of an audience. Live from sunny California, Bellevue, Washington." Oh. Which is not sunny. Sometimes it is. From Overcasty Bellevue, it's Privateer Night Live. And then Robin Liberect is that monster apocalypse. Yes, yes it is. That is one of the guard units, one of the uh, protectors. That is Defender X. Defender X, come to save the day. I've decided you can't say his name normal. You have to give it some kind of inflection. I still think he talks like in dubstep. Mm, Defender X. I'm here to assist you, human. Or is he go like, Citizen, stand down. Whoa, that's very authoritarian. Yeah, it was kind of robocop -y. Authoritarian X. Rikers asks if there will be a streaming schedule posted. Yes, I will be updating Twitch with the streaming schedule today. Today is the day you'll get the information you want about when we play at Lock and Load and every day. I'll tidy up that blend later. I'll come back to it. I always, I always put like an initial and then I come back with like that second. Mm hmm. Like the the, the follow-up cleanup, if you will. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to have a little guide, right? A little guy. A little guide. A little, like, oh, I thought said yeah, little that guy. is what I want a to have guy. happen. Now we're going to now we're gonna enhance it a little bit. Hey, little guy. Any conversions you guys are looking forward to seeing with Mon Park? Parts and War Machine and Hordes. I got one of those. Well, I got a conversion. Yes, I have a conversion for... Okay, so I have a conversion idea. But it's for another Defender X. <laughs> and it's completely out of my scheme. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... So there's... It's like, on one hand, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. Like, I can really... Like, I got this idea for a Defender X. And yeah. then on the other hand, I'm like, I'm already painting two Defender Xs. And this Let's one will not it go. It won't go with the rest of my army. Yeah. So do I do it for just a thing to do, mm. or do I not do it and right. think of something smarter? I, so what I'm excited for is honestly, like, whichever way JR decides to go, because we're either going to get blighted stuff in Monpok, or we're going to get uh, some kind of cross between the Monpok stuff and trolls. I mean, if he's Monpoking his trolls, then he's just basically stealing the Steel Creel. 
Well, it depends on what you take. Kind of, but no. I'm, I'm saying he will bring the trolls into Mondbox somehow. Oh, yeah, yeah, he'll do that. That's how he do. Like, G-Tank, like, G-Tanks will, like, literally be, like, whelps with a tank head or something like that. Oh, my God. Okay, that's dope. Welps, welps <laughs> JR, go make that. Yeah. Little whelps sticking out of the hatches and stuff. That'd be adorable. Just too cute. All right, bringing out that orange. So bring Brother Scott that says that uh, that his accent should be German. Like, he will be defending your planet from the planet eaters. Better you like it or not, puny human. That was more Austrian. Yeah, it was a little more Austrian. That was more Austrian. I need Zane here. He, he dropped me some straight-up German. Das ist schlecht. Do not resist, for I'm here for you, to protect you from those who would do you harm. Now taste my laser cannon! I was waiting for it. <laughs> uh, RuneWise says, is the fluff continuous? Are the non-stats from the guidebooks and story from the comic books applicable to this guard and planet eaters? That is an excellent question for Mr. Getz and Mr. Seacat. Well, I tried to get Getz in here and he told me no. Well, he's busy today. He's doing stuff. Getz, are you listening? Come come, just answer this one question for us. Just this one. If he's as busy as he mentioned, he's probably, probably sadly not. And if you are listening, don't just answer in chat. Right. Go ahead and crash the room. Crash the room. I crossed the room on you yet. Uh, Tuesday? Was it Tuesday? I mm -hmm. peeked my head in because mm -hmm. I thought I heard, I thought y'all were done. <laughs> and I was like, open the door. And you just looked at me like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm good. Just, I'm leaving the room is what I'm doing. It, it's why. So, Chick needs to get me a soundboard. Uh, he needs to get me a couple of on air lights because the signs that we put up like basically are ignored <laughs> uh to be fair there was no sign on the door that's a lie it's the first thing i do when i go down to there to be morning. fair i can't read there you go raven says this will be their first lock and load welcome welcome you're going to have a blasty blast and for those of you not aware Lock and Load Game Fest 2018 is this June 22nd through 24th at the Bellevue Hilton in Washington. Don't remind how close it is. I'm not ready. Less than 20 days. That, dude, it's like less than 15. Yeah, it's like, whoa. I'm not ready. I'm Nate not Brooks, ready. fantastic sculptor, says, I've been to Lock and Load four times and it's been sunny every time. Yeah, usually actually Lock and Load is pretty sunny. Um, fortunately, it's not hot, so that's that's awesome. So yeah, you have you have a good solid two weeks to to get your paint on to bring awesome stuff to lock and load for Dallas and everybody else to look at and tell you uh, give you tips. So you have a second to talk about the uh, about the uh, P three Grandmaster Challenge. Let's talk about yeah. Let's talk about lots of stuff that. We can talk about at Lock and Load. What do you want to talk about? Let's let's start with the P3 Grandmaster. How do people do that? So P3 Grandmaster is the Privateer Press um, premier, preeminent uh, painting competition. Um, if you don't know, it is a open judging system. And what that means is um, everybody in the category that deserves a gold will get a gold. Everybody in the category that deserves silver will get a silver and bronze we'll get a bronze um so that means there's no you know there's not just first second third there's lots of golds there's lots of silvers there's lots of bronzes um so i think that that's one, the only one that's limited is the grandmaster right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, out of each category out of all the golds uh one gold will take home the category grandmaster and then out of all the grandmasters or all the category grandmasters will be the overall Grandmaster, Grandmaster. And we have a new category this year. 
yes, busts have been added to, and they have their own category. So of the four uh, busts, you can enter those in the category and compete against your friends in the bust category. I'm super excited for that one. Um, um, and see uh, the, the, all the sweet busts that we get entered in for that. Oh, I'm, that's the. I think that's what I'm most excited for. But just because it's new, right? Yeah. Well, it's new, and it's also like I'm 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 partial to the bust. Yeah. So the other thing that people should be aware of, if they're not already, is normally the busts are only available at conventions and are usually set to exclusive on the web store. However, since we made that announcement a couple months ago that busts was a new category, they are available on the web store all the time while they're in stock, which they can go out of stock pretty quickly. Yeah. So if you need one for lock and load or, or just Con, need one or if you just need one store.privateerpress.com go get it now. So uh, entering the competition and winning is all fun and dandy and wonderful. Um, the biggest thing though is the feedback. Um, I literally cannot express to you how important that first bit of feedback I got from uh, Mr. Ron Cruzy, who you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, will see, meet at Lock and Load and hang out with at Lock and Load. And you should. And his bear Mishka. Um, if he has a... a, a yes. Um, that first bit of feedback was vital to uh, me pursuing this job, uh, this career, and me understanding that it is possible to do something like this um, and so if you want to get better you have to ask questions and you have to get feedback and you have to listen to that feedback um, I will say that my feedback is considered some of the most harsh and but truthful is what most people will tell you um, and I don't think it's harsh. It's just I'm, I'm very honest, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to coddle you. So here's my favorite part of the feedback you give, Dallas, because I've shown you a couple of things, and you've given feedback. And while you haven't been particularly harsh to me, you always follow it up with tips on how to get there. Yeah. So, like, anything that you might point out, like, say, my shading needs work, yeah. right? You will discuss with me how to get to what you're talking about. It's not just your he's not going to go your shading sucks. Well, It'll it's not just get good. Right. No, it's, it's it's like, hey, your shading's not really pronouncing these areas well enough to, you know, like ex exaggerate the highlights in comparison. You'll want to go a little deeper or mm -hmm. whatever the whatever the feedback is, they will also tell you how to get to the point, yeah. the next step. So again, that feedback super important, super wonderful. Um, to me, it's the most important part of just growth as an artist. Um, there is no one single greatest artist of all time. Sorry. Um, Bob Ross. Fight me. Um, and when I say fight, it's a knife fight with broken bottles. Because um, that's how I roll. Um, but it's it's a, you know, get that get that feedback. That's the most important part. So that that's the Grandmaster. And you just enter by showing up and turning in your model in the Hobby mm -hmm. Lounge. The other thing that's going on that has to do with the Hobby, or at least one of the other things that has to do with the Hobby, there's lots of things Hobby is something JR started for this year. Everyone's familiar with the hashtag Play It Painted. Well, JR is starting a thing called Display It Painted, where you get to show off your models, and the studio folks are going to show off all their models, or at least the, the, a selected few, so everyone can check them out. So not only can you come enter the Grandmaster Painting Competition and get some excellent feedback, you can also show off the work you're proud of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're working on that and exactly what that entails. And I'm, I will be bringing definitely my Grimkin and probably my Kador to show off. There's some people asking for the Filthy Five making an appearance. Oh, is that oh, – th we, we just started that. We just said the words, and now they're already asking for No, it was five. earlier. That's why I brought it oh. up. Um – yeah, I'll bring the Filthy Five. Why not? Well, because we need to play Company of Iron. You and I have not faced off. Uh, and I might bring the Steel Creel. I like, oh my gosh, I could bring like four, five bloody armies. Uh, I'll have my Defender X, my G Tanks, my repair trucks all painted up and at lock and load as well. Um, 
And then, of course, my favorite thing, uh, hobby related. Well, the hobby classes. Let's talk about hobby classes. Yeah. So, uh, Danny, Brendan, Jordan, and I. Who? Jordan. Who? Jordan who? Um, are all doing hobby hangouts. Um, we have a different selection. You can see them on the uh, Lock and Load uh, website. Uh, what hobby classes? Um, I know two brush blending. There's a Crucible Guard faction focus that Brendan will be doing. Um, and in the pause there, not just the hobby classes, but any of the events. If you go and register for them, pplockandload.com. If you see waitlisted, sign up anyway if it's a thing you want to do. There's a lot of people that either don't show up or they get busy with their games or what have you. Don't let that little waitlist tag discourage yeah. you. Sign up. Sign up. Um, so a lot of hobby hangouts. Uh, Doug Hamilton will be there showing off some probably some sculpts. Probably sculpts he's not supposed to show. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, he's kind of notorious for that. Yeah, you're like, Doug, why'd you show that? That's not he's like, that's Iron not. Painter. Another fan That's favorite. what I'm getting to. I'm getting. I'm building up to the Iron Painter. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm. I'm building up to my favorite event at Lock and Load. Uh, but yeah, the Iron Painter, which is a speed painting competition. Uh, first, you got paint a miniature, and then the top three of those will face off against the Iron Painter for the Iron Painter challenge. And that's a speed painting competition that will be live stream with trivia, a lot of prizes, a lot of wackiness. I know. It's one of my favorite events as well. It is my favorite event. And JR has come up with some new devious uh, uh, wrenches to throw into the... He's pretty good at being devious. He's just devious. And then uh, to to mess with the painters and the iron painter, to uh, to confound, befuddle, and just overall screw with. Slow Fuse Gaming says, hey, Dallas, how's the day? Also, thank you, Slow Fuse, for uh, hosting us on your channel as well. That's uh, super appreciated. We love it when people share uh, the joy of painting with everybody. Yeah, share the joy, share the love, share the magic of the paintbrush. That didn't rhyme. No, but that's okay. Not all rhymes rhyme. What? <laughs> I'm just saying. And then Mini Zot, if I'm saying that right, says, what is this model? That's Defender X. It's the answer super is, dope. this model is awesome. It's from Monster Apocalypse, uh, coming back to the forefront of tabletop gaming, and that will be releasing in September. I gotta flip him up like this, because we know that you can't paint just in one angle. Do it. Rotate that model. Alex Barker says that white and orange is incredible, Dallas. Oh, thanks. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm 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 leaving this a little bit on the dark side um, of the orange. I'll, I'm working those highlights into my orange right now, and I'll probably pop them out one more time um, with some little final pop lights. Word. And of course, if anyone would like more information on Monster Apocalypse, including Defender X and his friends, they can go to monsterpocalypse.com. Defender X and friends teaching about friendship while going pew pew with lasers lasers are friendship I can I can agree with that lasers are friendship Alex says are you going to do a pancake cook off at lock and load man if I could I would unfortunately there's just not the facilities for that hotel staff gets cranky when you take over their pantry and kitchen I've tried a few times. They don't I like do it. what I want. Apparently not in that instance. Not in that instance. I do what I want up until the point where the authorities are called. <laughs> and then I acquiesce to their like demands. Raven makes a good point. Uh, the Lock and Load weekend is also the Pride weekend in Seattle. And there's all kinds of cool stuff that goes on that week and that weekend outside of it. So if you have some extra time that you want to spend in Seattle slash Bellevue, uh, do that. Truth. It's pretty cool. Truth. Striker says, does Defender X have a pilot? Yes. Yes, he does. I think it's a crew. 
Yeah, I think it's more than one. I think uh, I think it's five. I, have I don't the, remember. I have the old comic books at home. I yeah, I have to. Those. I have to grab those again. Ooh, Stephen Hoover uh, says Dallas. Any recommendations for cool metallic colors that go with Deathless Metal? Well, I need to improve my uh, convergence of serious paint scheme. Uh, metallic colors that go with Deathless Metal. I am a big fan of um, Blight of Gold mm -hmm. and Brass Balls. Mm -hmm. um, you can also counter uh, have like your contrast color be uh, this boiler black. Mm -hmm. um, so you have your cool metal and your warm metals together. I love boiler black. Um, but th those are like the three quick examples of what you can do. I also really like cold steel. Like cold yeah. steel for me is like if I'm painting anything metal, no matter what color of metal it's going to be later, I love starting there. Yeah, cold steel is super, super good. Well, and it takes it'll it'll take another pigment really well. Like if you want to warm it up or cool it down. Yeah, it takes his gl takes a glaze really well too. Like super good. So, I always throw that one in the mix. Defender Rex is on the way. He's coming to save the day. Man, I want I want Defender Exos, like the breakfast morning cereal. <laughs> Wouldn't those just be Defender X's and O's? Defender X's and O's. Yeah, they're like they're like laser hugs for your mouth. Laser hugs for your mouth. Cygnus Yellow, where is it at? There it is. So now I'm going to go with some Cygnus Yellow. I uh, don't know if I'm going to add this to my previous mix or just do it straight. We'll find out here. After these messages. Defender Exos, the breakfast morning cereal. They're like laser hugs in your mouth. Defender X's and O's, available at frying retailers worldwide, and part of a complete and balanced breakfast. There's a prize in every box. It's more lasers. I'm trying to decide what shape Defender X's are, because you want to say X's. Well, yeah. And O's. Correct. And the marshmallows look like his head. And the uh, and his jetpack. no his backpack his, yeah I was just gonna say and his and his jetpack backpack shaped marshmallows. Uh, Vandeby says, does the crew of Defender X sing in harmony while piloting him into combat? Lama juice. What I say yes. Oh, do they crew sing? Hell yeah. Steven says, boiler black is already a secondary color, so he's gonna give Cold Steel a try. Cold steel, baby. Alec asks if we're going to re-release the Monpoc comics. Maybe. I don't know. I honestly have heard nothing on that one. But I know there's definitely people in the studio that would love to have that happen. So, we'll see. Uh, Nate Brooks says, which of the Monpoc breakfast cereals is like a rocket punch to the mouth? I mean, that's a de that's Def X. Because he rocket punches. He does rocket punch. So, it, uh, yeah, we, we got to get rid of the laser Okay, punch. so, it's, no, it's no, not no. Laser, it's, a it's, rocket, a it's a rocket punch to the mouth and a laser blast to your taste buds. There you go. Nailed it. I do like rocket punch to the mouth. So now instead of backpack shaped marshmallows, they're fish shaped marshmallows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, but douche! Why Striker 911 back to the Saturday morning cartoon? Like, I know it's the internet, and I know I can't tell, but I hope you're like, it, it's always going to be back to the Saturday morning cartoons. Every time. Every time. Saturday morning cartoons, heavy metal, karaoke. Defender X's and O's. It's like a rocket to a punch to the mouth and lasers to your taste buds. Exploding with flavor. Pew, 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 pew. Alright, just some little highlights. So I mix the Cygnus in with the... Mm -hmm. Previous mix 
Forgive so we've me. got some Inferno Orange, Heart Fire, and then now we're up to adding some Cygnus Yellow. Yeah, added some Cygnus Yellow to that. And I'm just going to do some very minimal highlights just to pop them plates. And now I need to talk to Mike Ryan. Oh, yep, Runewise just said the same thing. Now I need to talk to Mike Ryan about making uh, that cereal pin. Defender X's and O's. Man, I had a cereal pin idea the other day. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Was it Gorgadra? No. Belchers? No. Cannot remember what it was. Alex says, why limit to Saturday morning cartoons when you could go full 80s anime? I consider that Saturday morning cartoons they just were... in Japan. Well, they were also And Star Blazers on. and stuff was shown over here. Yeah, that was just kind of when it happened for me. And Voltron, you could kind of count that, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Nate says we need some Planet Eater pancake mix, and Legionnaire says this commercial needs Terry Crews from the Old Spies commercial. Oh, God. I would be so happy. You can ask my lady. I have an unnatural obsession with Terry Crews. He's my favorite. He's literally amazing. I will watch anything with that dude in it. When he showed up in Deadpool 2, got real happy. Real happy. When I realized he was on uh, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, had to start watching that. So on and so forth. Raven Fletcher says, laser blast that morning hunger. Sorry, I started watching. I got quiet. Yeah, I got. I kind of got wrapped up in drawing a little line. So sorry, guys. I, I kind of get. I get, sometimes I got focus and I and I forget to talk. At least I don't forget to breathe. Yeah, that's that's good. Alec Luda says Terry Crews is my man crush. One of yes. Dallas is the other. Why? No. Just all kinds of fun painting and, and, and singing songs on Thursdays. I do sing songs on Thursdays and sometimes Friday nights and Saturday nights. We get to hang out. It's delightful. Ah, karaoke, you're the best. Ugh. I don't know what I would do without karaoke. Uh, live a hollow and empty life. We should do a karaoke at Lock and Load. I wish... Though, there is a place that does karaoke that's not far from there. Really? Yes. Uh, sounds like a field trip. It's on 148th. Alex says John is into bald heads. Never thought about it that way, but I guess so. Apparently, I am into funny funny dudes with, uh, with uh, oh, 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 smooth big. domes. It's too big. Shave me down, make me round. I don't know what to do with that. As another Saturday, well, not Saturday, but cartoon reference, actually. Mm hmm. Five points to Gryffindor if you can tell me which one. Iron. Er Andrew DeRoma says we should do an Iron Kingdoms karaoke night. Not sure how we pull that off, but I'm down. I don't know, even know what that means, but yep. <laughs> well, yep. What else is this guy? Oh, I still got to highlight the glows. Mm -hmm. This is about done. He's looking pretty solid. About done with this. So I know I've said it before, but one of my one of the reasons I'm super excited about Monster Apocalypse coming back as a hobby game is the models, right? Like I like the models that we make, but I'm liking these ones almost even more Ooh. for the fact that like one, like Defender X is like five pieces, maybe six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's amazing. Like the engineers and the sculptors and stuff that, that made that work like that and gave him still such a dynamic pose. Mm -hmm. I dig it. Mm -hmm. He's big dude. 
He's got lots of fun surface areas to paint. He's got just enough detail that I can have fun with it, but I don't feel overwhelmed by it. Mm -hmm. And if I want to do something like really cool texture wise, I can like work on that part of my painting, which is definitely a place I need practice. So like having like those really big turbines in his backpack and the smooth areas on his armor plates, I'm really excited to paint these dudes. And I'm really excited to see how that turns out for like the Shadow Sun Syndicate and the Lords of Cthulhu. Oh yeah. Like I cannot wait. Like I keep going down to like the area where like uh, Dallas and the sculptors are like hoping to catch a glimpse. So Angsty Wonderland, can you guys let us know if you need two for each monster, one for normal, one for evil? You don't need. Uh, it's just fun. It's just I, I prefer, and I, that's what I'm doing. Uh, several people are. Uh, several people are not uh, building their armies like this. Uh, I like to take the opportunity to do fun stuff like that um, when I can when I can come up with a unique idea. Uh, mm -hmm. But need is a... It, you absolutely do not need to. Yeah. Like, it is literally for funsies because... So, on... It, the way Dev has told me it works is on the card for your monster and or giant robot, the one side is the alpha regular form, and then when they go hyper form, you just flip the card over and the other stats and stuff are on the other side. However, that does not mean you can't like, do a different mod like for your hyper form. It is definitely encouraged from all of those that all of us that are in the hobby, because it's just fun and you get to do like a cool different scheme. I mean, like, I'm the guy that did a shadow for my Grimkin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like Dallas is like super clean red glow alternate Defender X he's doing is, is, you know, an option of keeping them actually fairly similar, but you can also go crazy. Like if you wanted to like repose stuff or like, you know, like do like battle damage or something like that or whatever you want to do, this definitely follows under the, your army, your way. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I got transfixed again on what you're I, doing. I, I begin <laughs> to realize that your army, your way is a is more than just paying measures. It's a it can be applied. It's a philosophy that can be applied to many aspects of just your life. It, it, absolutely. Are we going to be demoing Monster Apocalypse at Gen Con? Um, I believe we may. If JR uh, knows for certain and wants to pop in here, he can definitely do that. Uh, I think he is also stupid busy getting ready for lock and load. So, hence why it's just me and Dallas today. We got a lot going on in this studio. It was real busy. It was real busy. It was real busy. Zach, let me just say, I would not be surprised at all if we do end up demoing at Gen Con. That would, I would not be surprised. Little highlight. Travis Marg, who is my favorite ever, uh, says, is it just Alpha and Hyper or no Mega? I don't know. I haven't gotten to play test, so I, I don't know if there's a Mega form. I guess we'll know soon. Nope. But I do know for certain Alpha and Hyper. Well, Alex says, the Tao of War Machine, your army, your way. Absolutely. Look, man, the other day my son comes up to me and says, hey, I want to, you know, do this thing. And I was just like, hashtag your army, your way. And that was my answer to it. Legit. had nothing to do with miniatures or painting. I was just like, hashtag No, it's just a great away. philosophy for parenting as well. I was just like, hashtag your army away, dog. Privateer Press does not recommend taking any parenting advice from Privateer Press. <laughs> Especially me. Allison Jakes says, hello, Dallas and John. Hello, Allison Jakes. You're my favorite Signar person ever. I'm not giving, I'm not, I'm not picking favorites. I like you all. Allison oh, I Jakes. thought it was like legit the Allison Jakes. Oh. She's got lots of belts. A ton of belts. Girl got belts. It's I don't like know. A, I've just like legit. It, it's I've like, like, like an 80s 
a pop rock video exploded on it. And then went steampunk and Iron Kingdoms. Like, how do you not get better than that? The only one that I'd, like, argue is on par for me is Haley. The, the art that we have for Jake's, especially, like, the newer one where uh, she's all upgraded and she's the captain. <laughs> She, uh, the art for that, Captain where she's Jakes. taking out all the, the zombies and thralls and whatnots, that art is friggin' dope. But let's be fair, I'm, I'm a Signar nerd. I like Signar. Everybody's allowed to like things. True story. Once again, your army your way applies to everything in life literally everything all right i'm gonna make a new color so i have a mix of josh bacon says is that the new crucible nope monster apocalypse defender x part defender of the protectors x is on the way defender x is here brian finken says that looks amazing dallas you look amazing brian boom boom what do you think of that Reciprocal compliments. So what what kind of color are you mixing up? So I'm mixing um um I have a mix of oh farts. Um Arcane Blue, Necrotite Green, and Carnal Pink. And it makes like a arcantricky green. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna mix a little metal white highlight into that. Bing. Bingham. And then I'm gonna put little uh, hot spots in the the in, turbines. Oh, in your glow bits. Glow bits. Mm, glowy time. Glowy time is the best time. I, I am reminded of the other cool hobby related thing going on at Lock and Load that, uh, that we don't talk about, enough about on the stream. Uh, the cosplay contest. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the cosplay contest. Oh my god. Like some of the different stuff I've seen at Gen Con, other conventions, Lock and Load especially. Like people make some dope stuff. And even like some folks that are uh, like well out of the country and haven't made it over here yet, I've seen some really really awesome costumes uh, like on Instagram and stuff like that <laughs> and so anyway that will be going down on I believe Saturday and so if you have some last minute stuff to get together as far as uh, your costume do it now and then if you want to learn how to make some of the stuff uh, we have a class on that that will be going on at Lock and Load as well sign up for that you get a thing so not only do you get to learn how to make a thing, it's hands-on, and you get to walk away having made a dope thing. And those are my favorite kind of classes. I mean, let's be honest. Making things? Make Like, where you actually get to make stuff. Like, it's definitely, you can, you can go to those informative ones where someone, like, teaches you, you know, like, uh, you know, this technique or that technique. And you can definitely learn a lot and take something away from that. But I always find that I get way more out of it if I can participate. Sure. Yeah, I never get to make it to the to the uh, cosplay stuff, but it always looks really fun. I'm always busy at Lock and Load. So. Alex says, any talk about the new con exclusive alt sculpt? Uh, nothing to declare just yet, but I can say, uh, and I believe it's said before, that your first opportunity to get uh, Journeyman Kane and Kane Zero will be at Lock and Load. And he's dope. That is just fact. I will confirm the dopeness. So I'm just working the glue. 
So if you missed last week, the glow is. Um, I painted it mint off white highlight, and then I did that archantric green color as a kind of a glaze over top of it, painted it. And then I used turquoise ink and inked it, and now I'm going back with that um, um, that archantric color with mint off white highlight, working that in to create like a like bubble lasery effects. And then I'll finish off with a little, little, little touch of just pure metal light highlight to finish the glow off and uh, give those final, final hot spots. So you can see here, I'm just going to like kind of do like this with that color. This lets my blue reside inside that little gem. Little blue light. Looks really good. I like uh, I like turquoise ink. I've been uh, playing with it more lately. If you haven't played with it, you should give it a try. Let's see what you got. What do you got, chat? Got any questions? I'm waiting on you, chat. I rely on you. What do we got here? I'm gonna grab it by is that it? I thought the glow was from the last dragon. Ah, nice. Thank you, Legionnaires. Let's put a little glow in here. So now the little trick you can do to get like that um, kind of a particle effect is take this brush and I wet the surface and I put a little dot and it immediately disperse it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Wet the surface. Little dot. And I get that dispersion. Get that dispersion and it gets, uh, it's very easy to, uh, way to create kind of that um, blended effect. And then uh, Stryker's been asking, and I missed it before, but uh, he asked again, are you going to be doing anything like scorch marks on the thrusters? Mm. Or do you think maybe this is a clean energy and that's why it's blue? Look, he's like... I don't know. Maybe? Where, where, are, you think, uh, where are you thinking scorch marks? I guess, I guess that's my question. Because like on the other side, it's all glow. And this is pretty black. I might put some glow coming out of this. I don't, so I'm not really sure where to put scorch marks, but I do see your point. And then a couple of, uh, of hobby related questions here. Exoskeletal says, my wonderful girlfriend has been painting up her first miniatures doing so good. Do you have any advice for someone who is brand new to the hobby? She's quite afraid of making mistakes. Uh, we've watched 101 and many of the other videos, thanks in advance. Okay, first off, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. There is literally a video in the P3 series called Fixing Mistakes. Yeah. So for for a very first painter, go to Privateer Press on YouTube. There is 10 videos. That is the just the beginning steps. Even if you've been painting for a while, I totally recommend watching those 10 videos. Not from my ego or anything like that. It's just, it's a good refresher and a good reminder. And it's a good basis on how I talk and like the definitions of words um, that I use. Um, and it lets us all have the same um, lexicon to have our conversations with. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Watch enough of these live streams. I make mistakes live on mm -hmm. this live stream constantly. It's okay to make mistakes. You just keep going. And you just keep learning. Keep that miniature, right? Five years from now, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, oh, oh, wow. I've gotten so much better. And you're going to have some physical evidence of your improvement. And uh, as Dallas likes to say, painting miniatures is the fine art of correcting one's mistakes. Boom. Once again, just another life philosophy. If you've really been paying attention over the past two years, my miniature painting is literally just a philosophy of life. Oh, absolutely. 
Well, it's well, and so as far as I'm concerned, any hobby that you truly enjoy is just that. Yeah. I mean, that's like the whole basis behind, behind like the Tao of motorcycle maintenance and stuff like that. Like those books, that's basically what they're saying is those same, you know, like philosophies you apply to your hobby and the whole reason you love it and that it enriches your life yep. can be applied to the rest of your life. Look, patience, practice, perseverance, that, that goes well beyond just painting miniatures. Uh, Vandebeest has uh, another question that's actually fairly useful to folks. Uh, how often do you change your brush water? Once a session, when switching from metallics, some other time. Uh, <laughs> I'm really, really bad about changing my brush water. I'm really good about changing my brush water about every session. Um, metallics, I don't, I used to firmly believe that you should have two cups, one for metallics, one for uh, uh, regular paints. I no longer believe that. Um, painting in the studio with uh, Matt DiPietro, he taught me like he just didn't care, and so I just started to not care. And I, I this, this paint, I, I I use this cup for metallics and non-metallics today. So mm -hmm. I'm painting my white gloves with paint water that had metallic paints in it. It's it's fine. Now well, that being said. It, uh, let me preface that. If you have just taken one of these big gyre brushes and you load it up with cold steel and you painted a, a, a colossal with it and this cup is just full of metallic, metallic particles, yeah. switch out your water. Yeah. But if you can't visibly see it, it's fine. It's not enough to matter. Well, and so one of the one of the things that I've noticed is I used to care more too and still, until I started using our paints. But because the pigment is so robust in all of our paints, I find it really doesn't matter unless it, you're doing like it, a big it, amount. Yeah, unless it's just a huge amount, it just doesn't matter. But don't be afraid of your mistakes. I, mm -hmm. Embrace your mistakes. Embrace the uh, what I call the, the plateau. Um, that's something a lot of people are going to understand immediately. As a new painter, you might not. But there's going to come a point where it's just going to be like, I'm not getting better. That's okay. That, that means you're learning something and you haven't quite grokked it. But once you do, you're going to have a jump. So when you feel that plateau happen, that means you're on the verge of learning something. So that's when you want to push and really embrace that because you're going to come out on the other side of it with a new technique, ability, skill, something. Absolutely. So just embrace those plateaus. I, I love it when I hit a plateau. I'm just like, oh, I'm not getting better. And then I go, wait, that means something. What does it mean? Well, that means I've been pushing myself. And that means I've been learning new stuff. And that means once I figure it out, I'm going to have that sweet jump. So say someone is well on the road to, to really getting, uh, like, say, two brush blending right like it's starting to go pretty well they're starting to really grasp that mm -hmm. uh legionnaires asks what would the next technique after that be that you would suggest tackling oh gosh that's a really darn tough question um right because it depends what other techniques you already have in your tool bag yeah, like as uh, uh, yeah Riker points out uh he says glazing if you don't have glazing in your tool bag i mean definitely focus on glazing if you're working on edge highlighting like where where do you need to improve next would be my answer yeah it's sometimes it's also going back to basics like i said like going back and watching those first videos is is like a good idea because you're trying to improve on something right and, and learning a new technique is always good or refreshing your mind on technique is always super good um glazing is a good technique to have in your back pocket um mr will shook everybody what you spoiled it i did it was a total surprise how's it going there dallas i'm doing great yeah you do, you're doing right. awesome it looks very snazzy this is your alpha right finishing the alpha, alpha yeah. that's a lot of paint that's on the screen right now there's like four colors going on make the good <laughs> lord <laughs> you know what else is a good highlight dallas white <laughs> the look on your face it's like shock and disappointment yeah 
Well, you know, it's just so many pains. You're just like, what are you teaching people? Color theory, clearly, which is kind of disgusting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Will Schick. Um, what were we talking about? Techniques. Techniques. Yeah, just pick something and go with it. Like glazing is a good technique. Dry learning how to dry brush. Man, dry brushing is a very uh, subtle skill if you are truly doing it right. Um, learning how to wash. I love washes. I use the heck out of washes. Um, and it's there, you can be real subtle with them and get some really neat effects with them. So that's what you do. Pick one and go. So, so I'm assuming there's a is there? I, mean, I don't know. I was told to crash this after my other meeting, so I did. I mean, it's throwing me off plan. Usually. Usually. I mean, I just came in because I needed to stop the madness that's on the screen. Why don't you add four more colors to your mix so then we can't see your hands anymore? We can only see color swatches. Look, we can do that. So many swatches. Yeah, show them what's on the table, man. I, I got stuff. Sure. It kind of like goes with what you got. Okay. Your paints will be fine. Don't worry. I, I had something different in my head when you said show them what's on the table. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you could show them that too, I guess, but you probably don't want to. So there's Shix. Yeah, I, it's I, so I different. Say Defender X. Don't say Defender. That's not my Defender X. I want to see your Defender X. You haven't brought it in yet. I haven't finished it yet. Good lord, some of us don't get a paint for all day as a job. For man. sweet twelve hours a day. Some of us Saturday have to Sunday. just do it, you know, at home. So this is your G tank. Tell me about. Yeah, it's my G tank. Look, it's blue and shiny. Let's put Sweet. your elite G tank. Up my elite there. G tank is also up there, but my elite is very elite. You can tell because he's red. Which you've also pointed out that you can't tell the difference between my G tank and my elite G tank. I didn't do that. Somebody else did that. Somebody I else. gave you suggestions to fix that. Yeah, so those are my G tanks. Uh, the so I was, we were talking about different color choices and what to do, and I decided to go with. A very similar method to what I used on my Stormclad for the mm -hmm. No Quarter 2, No Quarter Prime 3, 2 or 3, I think it was 2, um, article. And basically, it's a really quick technique where you prime everything silver and then you take uh, a blue ink wash or a translucent. You can get like translucent candy colors that they do for airbrushing and stuff as well. And that's actually airbrushed on. Um, yeah, so like it's basically any kind of ink. Typically, if you apply it through an airbrush, it's a lot easier, but you can do it with, uh, with a brush. I actually did the tanks with a brush, and it effectively just makes this sweet pearlescent kind of car blue. Like the between my red and my mm -hmm. Facebook tank. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my little repair truck actually has uh, pearlescent red on it. I couldn't quite get the effect to work on the tanks, but Defender X is going to be pearlescent red, blue, and white. So he's going to be very, very Iron Patriot shiny. Is that your inspiration? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was like, what could I do with this? Let's. I know, not at all. <laughs> but I was like, Iron Patriot sounds like fun because it kind of is a it's a fun spin off of the, the studio colors. They look really good. I, will, I like that. Oh, I should have brought up a studio one, right? And then we can like have. All oh, compare the two different techniques. Well, I think the, all three, right? The studio like, colors, it's also metallic. Like it's pearlescent blue, but it's yeah. a mixture of Meridius and. Steel? It's cold steel? Cold steel with Meridius blue mm -hmm. and I believe I don't have I don't have the recipes memorized yet. I would, I would be surprised whether there's not radium platinum. I think radium platinum is the final highlight, but radium platinum is in a lot of places that nobody thinks about. Um gotta keep those color swatches up, man. Well and then there's the semi metallic too, which boils black and I yeah, think galvanized steel is in the studio one, but I can't remember off the top of my head at all. Well, much like uh, much like with your G tanks, I used the boiler black on most of the cannons and stuff for my yeah. And you tanks. can tell it's that but boiler black looks. I like tried to switch it up, and I did red glow for the laser guns instead of blue glow <laughs> for the laser guns. Now you also did something different here, where you you have your little targeting matrix mm -hmm. is like glowy. I did mine. I just left mine black. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Little it's little so blurry, blue. Dallas. Defender X would still tank these two tanks into battle with him. Yeah, they, they, they work with him. He'd they, be like, they'd be fine. You're, you're, you're Alpha Squad. He's going to be like, you take point. 
So one of the things I think you should really G tanks back you, should, you should show people at some point is how to achieve that mix pearlescent since you love throwing so many swatches together. Because <laughs> like every time I try to mix metallics with my normal paints, it never turns out quite right. Uh, we can do that. Like technique. it's it's never it's never metallic -y enough. We can do that technique. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So many paint colors. Cold steel, radiant platinum. Ah, radiant platinum. I would go Quicksilver. Cold Steel or Quicksilver. Yeah. And then you, well, I know, you just so take like, your inks and glaze it. And then multiple inks work in conjunction if you want to do that mm -hmm. too. But yeah, just taking taking the P3 paints, mixing them together to create a, to create a kind of pearlescent effect. Mm -hmm. like I, either the metallics is... So the problem that I find is that it's kind of like mixing that color with white. So all of a sudden, instead of the color that you wanted to be pearlescent, you now have... Red is a good example. It desaturates. You wind up with pink metallic, which is not what I wanted. And uh, it's really hard to darken, you know, a color back down without adding greens or more and more colors. And at that point, I lose interest. I could do, we could do, so. we could do a red pearlescent. Because um, I think by adding, I think if you glazed with blue first. Sure. Because you want to want your shadows mm -hmm. and then that's going to create that deep red. Mm -hmm. It's the same trick with Kador, right? It's like yep. you put that blue in there and then you glaze with the red ink. Um, I think we could do something. But we could definitely do a video on that. So I need an army to figure out well, what to do it with. The recipe <laughs> that's up there right now is what I'm doing on my color. And what is that? Uh, purple. You're purple. purple. Purples? Purples. But purple nurples. No, so like for me, right, the the airbrush has been just a godsend for creating those cool oh, metallic that? pearlescents. That's a weird that's not a Monpoc model at all, Dallas. What have you done? Nothing. What have you done? What have I not done? I don't know. Well, you haven't painted this model yet. That's from the fact. looks of it. So we want to show off a little bit of Sorsha three. I didn't mean to make that sound like a question mark. Where the Sam Hill? You need a better organization uh, system, sir. It's how I get to shows. Uh huh. We're just gonna have to set you up a separate rack up here. I, d I do. You had one at one point, I thought. There's one over here. Some it's still over here. Oh, okay. But there's a bunch of. Cr I need to restock it. People are very excited, so you should probably start painting this girl. I'm trying. Like. Do something, Dallas. Everyone's watching. The world is watching as I, mean, I flounder. Pretty much. This is not this is not a this is not a winning formula right here. This is not how we make a paint video? No. Mm -hmm. You actually have to paint in your videos. I don't know. So I know you don't know that, but I'm telling you now. Lessons learned. Paint, man. Paint. So this is Sorsha three. This is for um my white Kador. So yeah. She looks really cool. Can you call it your snow door? A snow door? Yeah. Snow door. You do have to kind of say it like a Lenny style. Snow door. Snow door. I like it. It's good. So what I did on her to achieve this white, so, and that's kind of why uh, it was fun to bring her in because we're working with two different uh, forms of white here and two different philosophies of white. I know we're running up on our hour and that's okay. Uh, but just wanted to talk about you're over your hour, just FYI. <laughs> just, just an FYI, bud. Not running up to over. I'm over. So this is gray coat gray, and then my white mix, which is um, Mara white mixed with underbelly blue, mixed with a touch touch of Trollblood highlight, and it's just kind of over oversprayed Zenithal style. And then I went back and reapplied my highlights or my shadows with uh, gray coat gray. And then I did a highlight with the um, Mara White mixed with Underbelly, and then a final highlight with Pure Mara White. Now, this is a different way altogether. Um, what I'm doing here, this is more Iron Hole. And I did, uh, I did black and then red. So you can see the red up here. And then I did the... Um, iron hole over top of that with the um, paint chipping technique, the um, hairspray technique, mm -hmm. and scraped it off. And then I did another layer of just um, 
marl white mixed with iron hole and then chip that off. So I'm creating a, a more dirty version of the white. So you can see two different variations of painting white here, and it's about not using white, right? It's, it's, you're, you're, the, the white is very, very minimal. Um, when I go to paint this, um, I will ver do the same thing with the Defender X. Just the edges will be pure Mara white. The rest of it will be my shades of grays and greens. There'll be more greens in this. How many shades of gray do you think you'll apply? Two. Can you multiply that by 25 for me? I can. So two, How many shades of gray would that be? be? 50. 50 what, though? 50 shades of gray. Yeah! Also, Alec, uh, the second I get my Muppet, I'll consider getting John his soundboard. Get Chick his Muppet. <laughs> or no. <laughs> or no. What? No, you don't need a Muppet. You want me to have a Muppet, Dallas. Imagine how amazing this would be if I was sitting over here talking to the mic, but instead when you looked over, you just saw a Muppet. Or no. <sighs> you have no sense of fun. That's accurate. Fifty Shades of Grey Lord. Oh, oh. boo earns, boo earns. <laughs> what you doing over there, Dallas? I just got excited, started painting. You started going into the zone. Frostfang 2.0. It'd be 3.0, wouldn't it? I don't think nah. Frostfang changed from one to two. This one looks like it got a little bulkier. Zero has. A frostfang esque weapon. I don't she think it's definitely does, frostfang. but it's like it's definitely not frostfang. It's definitely not frostfang, no. but it's definitely frostfang esque. I'm so excited for going to zero. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Yeah, she's a fun. She's a fun model. I I really like all. I actually like all the designs that we did for the the younger versions of our popular characters, but she's got a lot of really good nods to her. Her uh, winter guard days and her design. Oh, That's absolutely! And um, like uh, that is so cute. John mentioned, whenever uh, Mike was working on the color concept, um, like there was a lot of discussion about like how to keep it very winter guardy and more. Mm -hmm. Less warcastery and more. Really, is that the voice for that? Yeah, that's a oh. warcastery. Why? Why not? Why? Why does it why have not? such flair to it? <laughs> I don't understand. How many pieces of flair? I would say that's probably like 48 pieces of flair. You're too you're too off from 50, 50 pieces of flair. You know what the minimum number of flair Was is? Was it like five? I think it's 15. Ten. Was it 15? It's 15? Dear God, that's a lot of flair. 15 pieces of minimum 15 flare. pieces of flair. You don't want to do the minimum. But then why make a minimum? If you don't want to do the minimum, why make a minimum? I agree. It's like minimum speed limits. <laughs> oh, is it? Are we getting there? there? Okay, so... Um, get your paint on every Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, where we talk about uh, breakfast cereal, flare, and 50 shades of Grey Lords. Um, that's going to stick. And then every Tuesday, let's talk about what happens every Tuesday, is what? Weekly Rumble. Weekly? Weekly. Weekly. Weekly Rumble? <laughs> All right, Scoob. <laughs> Weekly Rumble, where yeah. we play games. And we've got a really good one coming next week. Have we told them what it is yet? I don't think so. Oh, we have? Did we tell them? Yeah. It's going to be a massive magic throwdown. Magic throwdown. Massive magic throwdown. Yeah. Massive magic mayhem. Ooh. Triple M's. Triple M's. The M cubed. Arcanist. So there's going to be a throwdown with Arcanist. Everybody's just looking at And we have, like, how many people so that? It's going to be madness. We have four people. And you're bringing a special model to represent your necromancer, right? Oh, am I playing necromancy? I mean, I assume based on the model <laughs> that just, you've picked. Am I just pigeonholed? Yes. yes, based on that model, you absolutely are. I hate typecasting. Well, you deal with it. And then every Wednesday is the development hangout where they mm -hmm. talk about the development in development, about developing the develops. New developments. You should new, go developments. new developments. That would have been good. Or math, apparently. Because I totally it... made a joke like they're not talking about math, and they were totally talking about math. Yeah, they yesterday. talked about math yesterday. I mean, we we said in the hijacking of it two weeks ago that that's what 
that's what Pagani would be doing to make up for the fact know, that there was no development two weeks ago. I wasn't able to watch it live yesterday because I was busy with other mm. things. And so I had to watch it later on. And I was just like, oh, they actually talked about math. Yeah, it's all about math. It was pretty amazing. I, I listened to it and it was really good. Pagani dropped some real math bombs. He did. He's a math guy. And that's it. Lock and load coming up in one and a half. Ugh. <laughs> two weeks two, two, two weeks plus a day, man. Two plus one days. Yeah. Which is 15 days. Pagani, I need your math. Days. We, need, we need math, Pagani? Math. Math, math Gani. Gani. There you go. Uh, and perfect. speaking of that, we're Gani. All right. Oh, it's just getting worse. <laughs> See you, everybody. Bye.